Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Well-Tended Life. I'm your host, Carrie Wilt, a speaker, writer, and heart cultivator who is on a mission to help you grow through anything. I am here today with my special guest, Mark Munden, who has graciously agreed to be a part of this new series called Our Secret Garden Stories that features those who have helped to bring to life the new Secret Garden movie, which we are all so excited about. So welcome, Mark. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, he's, you, you told me before we started that you are, you're, you're uh, already moved on to another project. You for, we, I think we all forget the, uh, the timeline of movies uh, that this, the Secret Garden has been in the can for a year and a half, maybe? Yeah, well, at least a year anyway. Um, we started uh, pre-production in September 2017 um, and we shot in uh, spring of 2018, so spring going through to summer. And then we sort of, you know, there was a period of post-production where we we're editing and we tested it on audiences um, at cinemas and things. And that we, we finished... Um, about this time last year, actually, maybe yeah. a, probably earlier than this, actually. Yes. But um, yeah, so oh, it has well, been it sitting so... there waiting to come out. And I the know. idea was for it to be um, to to come out as a uh, in the spring. Studio to Canal very much wanted to put it out in in the spring when you know to encourage everyone to get get out into their gardens. And uh, of course, it's supposed to come out in spring 2020 in, in April. And of course we were locked down by that time. So, um, but it won't, you won't have to wait that long, much longer for it. I don't think. No, no, here, here in the States, it's August 7th. Um, so ah. we're, we're super excited. I guess I didn't state that I am in Texas. Uh, where are you? I'm in London, North London, Highgate. Okay. Awesome. Okay, well, before we get going too far, my audience has no idea who you are. Will you introduce yourself and um, give them a taste of uh, who you are, what you do, and um, what your role was within The Secret Garden? Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm the director of The Secret Garden. Um, I uh, worked, uh, so I, I direct the actors, I direct the, the animals. Um, I, uh, uh, you know, I try and uh, sort of, I, 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 I put the scenes together um, according to the script um, and then we go away and edit it and uh, do the music and do all the post-production for it, uh, computer graphics and things like that. And um, yeah, so basically I'm there right from the very beginning. I mean, I worked with Jack Thorne on the script um, and right through to the bitter end. Yeah. So uh, Rosie told me that she had been uh, stalking you uh, for many years for many, many, many different projects and that you always told her politely no, uh, but you always told her no. What was it about this idea and this book that um, made you decide to say yes? Um, a number of things. I mean, um, I thought it, I, I'd never read the book. So, so really? when she approached me with the project, um, but I had seen both the MGM film of 1949 and the Agnieszka Holland film from the 1990s. And I was intrigued why she wanted me to do it because I, I'm mostly known for quite dark stuff, quite adult yes. stuff um, in my television work. Um, but I, I, I suppose my thing, my, my work is quite visual, you know. Um, at the same time, I'd just been working with Jack Thorne um, on a series called National Treasure, which, which actually played on Hulu in, um, in the States, um, which was about, you know, something much darker. It was about a historical sex abuse case, um, this uh, uh, veteran comedian going through this. Um, but it was a very emotional piece um, and a, a sort of uh, a, an examination of a family in crisis. Um, so, and, and, and basically working with Jack, that, that script was the best script I'd ever read, uh, the, the script of National Treasures. So I, I really felt like I wanted to work with him again. So when Rosie mentioned Secret Garden, 
I went back and I watched the films again and I thought, oh, yeah, I think I can, I think I can bring something to this. And then she sent me the script and the script was, I loved the script. Um, it was uh, funny and odd and it dealt with um, children in a way that you don't really, I mean, he's so, he, they were all idiosyncratic and, and, uh really individual and uh they were partly adults and partly children they had like this great emotional intelligence but they were still of you know the, the, such a tender age that I had limited ex experience of life um uh so i really loved the script and i just thought oh here is a chance to do something which is for families you know i'd never i'd never made a family piece before um and um and something that i i thought i could bring a little bit of myself to you know mm -hmm. uh you know a bit of my own heart um to to add to jack's uh heart well i i know she was over the moon when she told me that you you typically didn't do children's pieces that you you had some some darker <laughs> darker things that you work on. Uh, I reminded her that, and I don't know if you know this fact, but Frances, um, she, she was, one, A, she was one of the most prolific um, writers of her time. Uh, she wrote and wrote, and she was a pen-driven machine, and she wrote over 50 books, a thousand short stories, and 15 plays um, yeah. in her like 57-year career. And um, of that, 98% we're all for an adult audience. I mean, she, but she's known today, if you ask anybody who Frances Hodgson Burnett is, they'll tell you, oh, she's a children's author, but, but yeah. not at all. So, so I'm, I warn you, now you may become a famous children's filmmaker and you just, you didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. I, that that's, that's, I must yes. check out her more um, adult oriented. It's books. mostly, she was, I mean, she was a romance author, really. Um, yeah. Most most stories were about, you know, uh, love, lost love, happy endings. Um, but she was also, you know, she had that same grief um, that Mary and Colin um, dealt with. Uh, of, you know, she lost her father at the age of three. Um, and so, um, most of her work also very similar to, I believe like Disney, um, most of her work that includes uh, rarely a set of full parents. Um, mm -hmm. usually there's a, a loss of one or the other, or even both in, in most of her books as well. So, uh, so, which I think is interesting that this film really chose to, um, take a, a big deep dive into the grief piece. Of, of the secret garden story yeah well that was that was one of the things that really struck me about the script and and the book as well i mean i just thought there's a there's, uh, there's a lot uh, uh there's a great it was a great opportunity to tell a story of neglected children and uh the trauma that that brings um and in a way, it's sort of a, a PTSD story, you know, for Mary, yes. you know, who's who in our version and, and in the book, of course, is is sort of abandoned, um, uh, not, you know, uh, not 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 intentionally, um, uh, you know, at the start by her parents. So so and um, uh, uh, and it really the whole film is about her recovering from mm -hmm. this shock you know and how she heals and that that felt that felt that sort of um parentless life felt you know that that, that, that I, I i sort of understood that and my father died when i was 13 so i was i was brought up by my mother after that and i can remember that that you know actually very similar age to D dixie in the film um and I can remember those times and I just thought uh, together with Jack's writing that we could really bring out something quite interesting and emotional and, and moving about, about um, this girl's journey. And, and I would say healing, uh, when people keep asking me about it, it's, um, I, I just, I, I don't see a way that this movie doesn't 
heal hearts all over this world. Um, it, it has that, that, that richness, that message, the message of hope, but, but of, of empathy for, you know, for each generation and what, you know, what your perspective was on, 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 on the death. And I, it's just, uh, I, I feel like it's going, it's exactly what um, this world needs right now. Uh, you know, you mentioned PTSD. I think um, the majority of the world would, would say that they've all been through PTSD over the last six months and, you know, and dealt with grief. And uh, I think this will be, you know, I hate to say it's perfect timing, but I think it is perfect timing for the Secret Garden to help people unwind some of that um, and, and hear it in a different way, uh, which I think is also so lovely. I think that's one of the best things about the Secret Garden is that it tells stories you know, but, you know, through the magic of this garden um, and uh, somehow you hear it in a way that, that, that reaches deeper uh, in some way. Yes. Um, well, it's an opportunity for, it's, you know, it's an escapist movie in the sense of being immersed in this incredibly um, sort of wild and beautiful place. But it's also, you know, an opportunity that, you know, maybe sooner, sooner or later when we can get out of our houses and lockdown, we can look forward to ourselves doing exactly the same thing, getting dirt under our fingernails and uh, frolicking in the, in the earth again. Right. Uh, well, and nature so so healing anyways. What must it be like um, for you to be right now trying to direct a film in this in this COVID environment? Is, is that a, a, a crazy challenge or, uh, I mean, clearly you're making it work. Yes, well, I, I'm just in post-production at the moment. So I've actually okay. done all my filming. So oh, I, 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 I've, been, I've been glued to my my desk doing everything remotely for the last uh, th four or five months or so. So um, yeah, but, but I, I, you know, I can't, and, and now was just starting to open up here in the UK. So, so people are taking tentative steps outside and, you know, thinking that you're getting back to normality, but actually you're just getting into another weird abnormality, but yes. it does feel like people are, are healing in some sort of way you know it does feel like people are starting to slough off the you know the incarceration of the last four or five <laughs> months you know well um so one of the things i do when i interview people um uh, i ask them about the joy goodness and growth around them which this for me was inspired by the words of the secret garden where mary talks about how she never would forget that first morning when her garden began to grow and uh, I realized at a, at, a, at a young age that I, I never wanted to forget the joy, goodness, and growth that was happening around me. I always wanted to notice it. Um, and so that's really what where my, my next questions um, are, are coming from. Within your role of the Secret Garden experience, what brought you the most joy from that time, like on or offset? Like, what do you look back on fondly? Oh, gosh, that's such a big question. I mean, I think one one of the things that really surprised me about the filming process was really just about working with the children I mean in some ways it was difficult logistically difficult because the children had to be educated you know on set and they had to have certain breaks and I'm not used to spending so little time actually filming um, but I think the nature of the kids themselves, uh, which was so, they were such remarkable little human beings, um, <laughs> sort of brought a, it brought a really, an atmosphere to the set. You know, you, you've got a hundred or so, 110, 150 people standing around on set, all adults, you know, apart from them. Um, it just brought an atmosphere to the set, which was really, really lovely in a way that sometimes it can be quite fraught on a, on a film set because there's lots of money in, at stake and you haven't got very much time to what you, to do what you need to do. Um, and um, I think what happened with this is just the children being at the center of it all, just spread radiated out to everyone else and everyone, first of all, I think everyone, wanted to do that piece you know they wanted to make 
a film of the secret garden because they loved the book or they loved the script or they loved that, you know, whatever. But I think they also were very rapidly affected by this um, sort of chilled and rather sort of charming atmosphere on set, uh, for, which I think emanated from the children. And of course, we're in these lovely places. I mean, the film is, the film is, um, I don't think it's, it, it's, a, it's a spoiler to say, and I'm sure you'll cut it out if you do think it's a spoiler, <laughs> that the, the garden is sort of boundless. It's, it's not, it's not the, the traditional walled garden of, you know, as written by uh, Francis Hodgson Burnett. It's a, it's a garden which when, once Mary goes over the wall, she's in a sort of uh, boundless, changing um, uh, uh, sort of Alice in Wonderland universe yes. um, uh, where, where, where she's immersed in this other world. So, so, I, so to answer your question, we were in all these lovely places as well. So uh, 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 throughout that spring and summer, uh, uh, experiencing the sort of diversity that Britain has to offer in terms of uh, its, its, its nature, you know, from the subtropical gardens of southern Cornwall to, uh, you know, mountain streams in Snowdonia, Snowdonia in North Wales to the North Yorkshire moors, which are, you know, quite bleak. So it's a, it's a, it's a apart from anything house, it's a great sort of, um, uh, 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 you know, tourist advert for, for Britain. But, but yes. just actually being in those places and sort of, being in nature for that long was really joyful. Well, and uh, Rosie said that you all happened to get the best weather possible that the week that you shot in the gardens. She said it was probably the most stressful week of her life leading up, <laughs> you know, wondering, are, you know, is, are, this, are the clouds going to part? Or are we going to get the sunshine? And she said it was just like, it was ideal. Oh, yeah, we we're really lucky. I mean, I think about two or three weeks before we started this shooting, there was snow on the ground. That, uh, there was a late snowfall at Puzzlewood, which is the place that the very beginning of the garden, when she falls into the garden and the, she comes across all these gnarled trees with sort of, with moss everywhere. Right. Yeah, that was covered. We went on a recce there and couldn't see anything because it was all covered <laughs> in white. So uh, yeah, and then suddenly everything uh, lifted and blossomed really quickly <laughs> um, uh, and everything changed yeah um, so so we were very very lucky oh my goodness okay so that was joy the second one is goodness and goodness for me are the things that I am grateful for so as you look back and have some distance now from this project um, what do you feel most grateful for for being a part of it well, I'm very grateful that that uh, that that people as esteemed as Rosie and David Heyman, who ran the Harry Potter franchise, um, thought I would be, you know, thought of me for the film. Um, and also, I'm I'm very grateful to Jack's writing. I mean, I, I'm in awe of the man. I mean, I've I, I'm 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 currently doing something else with him. And um, he just, he has just such a, he actually, like, like um, Colin in the film, spent quite a lot of time in bed in, in his, in his uh, uh, early 20s. He, he, he had an illness. So he totally understands Colin. But I, 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 um, he, he has such a unique um, way of looking at, things and drawing characters that it, that that was I, I i you know i was very grateful for for people like that that are originating all this thing because obviously it was francis Hodgson burnett that wrote the book but he sort of it's a it's a it's a rather liberal interpretation of the characters yes. and of the story in places and he just brought his own um his own soul to bear on that um so that's another thing. And I, and, and I just think, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of, by a crew that were very, very dedicated to making it as 
as great as they could be. And that, that, you know, that's, everyone gets paid. They don't have to be like that. You know, they, right. can, they can just do the work, but they, you know, they, um, you know, everyone from Michelle Clapton to Grant Montgomery, the production designer, Michelle was the costume designer. Oh, she um, did a fantastic job. Yeah. yeah to Nadia Stacy oh. who did the makeup. I mean, uh, Lowell Crawley who shot the, the film. I mean, they've all done a d diverse amount of diverse work, you know, it, um, uh, and most of it not in family films, you know, most of, of it in sort of really, you know, the sort of same world that I'm working in, but they all brought something really, really special to it. And I'm very, I'm grateful for that because you can't, you can't legislate for that. You just have to cast your heads of departments and and say do your worst you know and you know they come at you with you know you know you, you sh one's grateful for the bounty of mad ideas that come come out oh. of that well and and uh, you know you talk about the the secret garden and it's kind of uh li it's limitless when when mary climbs over the wall it it, it truly knows no bounds and it it feels like that must have been what you did to the people around you is said, you know, here's, here's the idea. Here's, here's the thought of the secret garden. Here's the essence of it that we need to stay true to, but I want you to, I want you to take it in all the different directions. It's, it's, uh, it's really a fantastical version that I don't think that anyone, um, People going into the, into the theaters or into their homes to watch this, they have no idea what they are about to experience. They have, they are, they are going to be mesmerized by the by the minute that it begins, um, and and questioning. I think even everything they thought they knew about the Secret Garden while going on this magical dream ride um, through imagination, through flashbacks, through reality and wondering where it all meets. And then, and then they're looking in the corner for the little, uh, hidden pictures that are constantly going on. Um, I, it's interesting. I, I have had a hard time, um, even being able to speak about it, um, because it's what you and the team have created is almost indescribable. Um, it's, it's so many things all wrapped in one yet 100% still the essence of what Francis created. Um, and, uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it. I, I, I can't even, I can't even explain it. <laughs> well, I do think that, that, um, yeah, you're right. It is true to the heart of the book. I mean, it, it really is very much about change and, um, uh, but I, I, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was I, I just didn't want it to be a, you know, a, a Sunday afternoon tea time sort of viewing thing. I wanted it to be a little bit crazy in places. I did. I, I wanted it to be um, something that would would work for modern audiences. I am so sorry for my dog barking. Uh, Oh my goodness, y'all, how embarrassing is that? But what do you do? Sometimes the dogs just have to bark. The good thing is my crazy barking dog gives me the perfect opportunity to break in here to tell you more about the new Secret Garden movie. This fantastic new version of the Secret Garden tells the story of Mary Lennox, a prickly and unloved 10-year-old girl born in India to wealthy British parents. When they die suddenly, she's sent back to England to live with her uncle, Archibald Craven, played by Colin Firth, at Misselthwaite Manor, a remote country estate deep in the Yorkshire Moors, under the watchful eye of Mrs. Medlock and with only the housemaid, Martha. Mary begins to uncover many family secrets, particularly after chancing upon her sickly cousin, Colin, who had been shut away in a wing of the house and through her discovery of a wondrous garden locked away and lost within the grounds of Mistlethwaite. While searching for Hector, a stray dog that led Mary to the garden walls, she befriends a local boy, Dickon, who through the garden's restorative powers, helps her to fix Hector's injured leg. 
Once brought together, these three damaged, slightly misfit children heal each other as they delve deeper into the mysteries of the garden, a magical place of adventure that will change their lives forever. In the U.S., you can watch this fantastical version in your own home beginning Friday, August 7th via video on demand. But for now, let's get back to more behind the scenes scoop with the movie's director, Mark Linden. Okay, so um, as far as, um, what did you learn from making The Secret Garden? Was there, was there some sort of growth experience for you? I mean, clearly you got pushed outside your bounds with working with uh, kid actors, um, but was there anything else um, that you found that you, that you learned through that process? Uh, yes, I mean, I think um, being out, out of your comfort zone in making something like this, which I was, you're very much dependent on the opinions of other people. I've never, you know, in television, you don't test your, your uh, show. You don't, it's not played to an audience. Um, uh, for this, you know, for our, my first cut, which would normally play to, you know, some executives or something at the TV station, you know, we played it to 300 people at Wimbledon Odeon, which is a suburb in South London. And then they were all invited to market, as it were, you know, and, and give their, you know, then a small, smaller number were invited to give a more um, detailed opinion of it. And that's pretty, um, that's, uh, that's a frightening experience. Uh, I mean, it, it's I'm a nervous. totally. I'm nervous <laughs> for you. Clearly it worked out and you figured it out, but that's, I mean, that is. Yeah. Everything yeah, no, you poured your heart and soul into, and now they get to tell you what they think. Is that normal yeah, for, for all films? Uh, uh, definitely, definitely for commercial films. Yeah, and um, so so um, you know, you sit there in the audience, and um, you know every person rattling a crisp packet or eating popcorn <laughs> you're, you're sort of cursing and of course when you've got a, a, a family film that's playing with you know sort of you know whatever 30 40 percent of a, maybe even more than that 50 percent of the audience are kids then you know clearly they're not just going to sit there like sort of uh, you know statues at the very beginning so the first five or ten minutes of the film is all about you know chatting and sort of opening ice creams and things like that so it's all it's quite it's quite nerve-wracking um but um it made the film better i mean we had at least two tests um uh i think there was a couple of it was it was a little bit more frightening um to start with than than it is now i uh, i you know we had a couple of children T taken out crying <laughs> um you know we checked you so know, you had to were, so you had to dial that down a little bit yeah i think it was a little bit it was i mean the, you know the 1949 version is quite frightening yes um um and i think i just went too far i mean i i've, I've done a lot of frightening stuff in my <laughs> career i think i just went too far so so um um uh uh uh, you, this is when Mary is looking around the house for the sounds, you know, and comes, you know, uh, comes across Colin in his bedroom. So, so I learned a lot from that. And I learned a lot from what people didn't understand. It's always, that was quite interesting to, 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 that is, that's one of the things that you do get out of testing what people, you know, the logic of what they don't understand and things. Uh, and, and that, that was, that was interesting. That was an eye opener. And, um, and also I, I, I sort of feel like, you know, you learn a different set of instincts in terms of how you tell a story. Um, you know, my, 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 I have quite a European sensibility in terms of the way that I make films. It's generally not giving you everything. It's re gen generally quite challenging um, uh, f for an audience. And of course, if you're making a family film, you can't do that. You can't assume no. that everyone's going to be with you, you know. So, so you, 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 you're, you, you learn to trust different 
parts of your instinct and you're dependent on that for you know to be surrounded by people like David Heyman and Rosie Allison and people that have made a lot of family films before where you go yeah you're right you know I mean there was one time when (laughs) after one screen screening very early on when it was quite frightening at the beginning where David stood over me and he said you cannot have a, the sound of children being tortured in a family film. I said, it was not being tortured. It was just Colin crying out from his room. He said, no, you cannot have that in a family film. He <laughs> wagging his finger at me. And he was totally right. I mean, um, right. Uh, so, I le- you know, I learned I a lot from that. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it, it, as well as balancing that thing of w- what, you know, um, Francis Hodgson Burnett wrote originally which was of quite an obnoxious little character a spoilt little girl yes. uh, you know traumatized by this terrible um, uh, 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 event at the very beginning of the film how she sort of um, how she behaves with you know other children and with her nanny and things like that so and and you have to temper that, you know, as, uh, throughout the film, you know, so so people don't completely turn off. You have to be with this little right. girl, whether, you know, uh, be compelled by her, even though she's quite badly behaved. I mean, that's the, that's the, that, that's, that's the sort of uh, skill of the book, the skill of the writing. Um, and, uh, you know, luckily we had it in Dixie Edgerick, so uh, it's sort oh. of uh, just an intelligent, incredible incredibly sympathetic actress you know who who's not at all experienced but she had a, a very wise um head on a on the on a, in her child's body but um on, on a child's body but she 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 was you know that uh she brought a lot of she made that easier but there's lots of things that you're trying to navigate like that so you, you're just you're just learning all the time. I mean, you learn every day on the film set because you're, you're, you know, speaking personally, you're always making mistakes. So you're yes. trying to rectify them, you know. Um, but definitely, yeah, learning, learning from audience and learning from the, the cast, you know. Yeah. The other thing that I was going to say about being grateful for, we had like this magnificent cast on, on The Secret Garden. I mean, Colin Firth and... Julie Walters are legends, you know. Right. It's quite sort of daunting to work with people that are that. I'd worked with Julie before on the other Jack Thorne project that we did, National Treasure. Um, um, but I'd never worked with Colin before, and he's such a sort of titan of, of the screen that he's quite daunting working with someone like that. But he, 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 you know, that was, I'm grateful for them agreeing to be yes. in this film as well. Well, I can tell you, uh, I, I interviewed uh, 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 Eden, and he said that you were one of the things he was most grateful for, uh, <laughs> getting to to work with someone like you. Uh, they they clearly right. have a very good respect, and, and uh, for someone who is not known for children's film, you, you clearly left a mark on him specifically, uh, so. Well, he, he I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not sure that I was, responsible for his character he came in in character so he had he you know if you watch the film you'll you'll i i I don't know whether american listeners will have the ear you know attuned to it but he has this very sort of 1940s clipped english accent you just don't hear anymore it's a complete relic it doesn't exist anymore and um and i thought well he must be sort of um he must be, you know, must have gone to a sort of private school and be quite sort of, no. you know, might, you know, learnt it there. But he, so, so afterwards, I, 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 you know, after he'd been him a couple of times and I'd raked him over the coals, you know, auditioning him, I had a chat with him afterwards. So I realised he doesn't talk like that at all. And I said, <laughs> well, where, where did you, where did you, because one of the, the beauty for me about the piece is that you, you come to this room where, Colin Craven is sitting up in bed and um, it's almost as if you, he, he, not only has he been abandoned, but it's almost as the audience you're coming into, you're going back in time. He's been abandoned since the 1940s. So it's as if Mary has stepped into another era, as it were. 
And um, I asked him where he'd got the, um, where, you know, how, how did he learn how to speak like that? And he said they'd watched lots of um, YouTube videos of um, children in their 40s. <laughs> and, um, and that's where he'd learned the accent. And actually, he, he doesn't, you know, he, he's a completely different character. You know, of course, all the kids off set were playing Fortnite and all these other video right. games and things, you know. But, um, but, you know, he totally brought that character you know gave it its peculiarity um uh, uh you know out that that came ready made with him so, <laughs> i'm not responsible so, for anything so folks at home if you have kids who want to be actors just have them watch youtube they can probably figure <laughs> it out there don't no need to spend money on <laughs> that's crazy well i'm glad yeah. you clarified that because he mentioned um that the accent was one of the most difficult things uh but i was like i couldn't tell an english accent from the regular <laughs> there's no way uh yeah, yeah. so yeah my yeah. i don't think our ears would, would be trained to it but he's yeah. so good um yeah. and, and and jack had written it in that peculiar way you know as of it being you know, part adult, they are very emotionally intelligent, the kids, yes. but they've still got this limited experience. So, they, they, you know, I found that funny as well. That felt, you know, it was, it was um, it, it, you know, there's a lot of humor in, in the way that, that that works, especially the friction between Mary and Colin right at the very beginning. I always expect to some at some point for them to like bust out in a fist fight. Like it's always it's it's so right on the edge that you're just like, oh, she's just gonna sock him at some point. You know, I think I probably would. <laughs> Come on, snap out of it, guy. Um, so during the filming, did you um, have any pesky weeds or challenges that popped up during um, the filming? And and if so, like how how did you overcome those? Oh, you have those every day. I mean, I, you know, I can't, you know, it's really very difficult big. to, no, 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 there are lots of things that I could cite, but it's, you know, for instance, we, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm a bit of a glass half empty <laughs> character. So I always think, you know, my, a little bit of me dies every day when I realize, oh, we've lost that location. We've lost that. But, but actually you have to rem remember that all that stuff doesn't matter because you're getting all these wonderful surprises and, uh, and all the positives as well. Um, but you know, we very, the, the, the script was written with a fox instead of a dog. So it had this fox that she was feeding. She'd been become friendly with, and they talk about this one. And, um, we very quickly realized that, um, we, that, that actually you can't train a fox. I mean, we went <laughs> to visit so supposedly trained foxes. I mean, London nowadays is full of foxes, you know, called, um, um, they've become quite um, bold actually, rather than the sort of, you know, things that you never used to see in the last sort of 15, 10, 15 years, they've become very bold, but nevertheless, you still can't train them. And, um, uh, and we did spend a lot of time, you know, like looking at these foxes with with this animal trainer and then realized that we just have to end up doing a whole load of uh, computer graphics in order to make it work. And that was going to cost quite a lot of money, more money than we had. So we decided to change it to a dog. And at the time, I, I was like, you know, it's not really half as good, you know, every, you know, but actually Fozzy the dog in, in it, everyone loves Fozzy the dog and he's awesome. pretty extraordinary apart from, you know, coming, being able to limp or, on commands, you know, but, but um, yeah, no, it was, a, it was just one of those things which, you know, in retrospect, of course it had to be a dog rather than a fox, you know, so lots of things like that, you know, we, we lost locations, um you know we were supposed to be film at revo abbey um and then we had to go to fountains abbey and at the time that felt um problematic but of course it wasn't you know it's just that you just have to learn to adapt um and um uh you know you 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 just you know you have to you just that i suppose the i suppose the you, you know part of the art of the director is that uh, they have to be as ambitious as it takes to absolutely stretch the budget to its limit, you know, and, yes. and, 
and, and you're always trying to compromise in order to get it within those limits. So it really is about the art of compromising and what you compromise and what you don't, you know, and how you play that. So, so um, those are uh, sort of, yeah, you know, oh, multiple I love that. pesky it's, weeds and challenges. Well, and that's so applicable to our own lives where we all have a limited budget. We all uh, of time, money, energy, and, and, you know, how we use those resources and you know how we how we move and change based off of what resource resources are taken off the the plate is you know yeah how good we are in the end so yeah and it's about i mean i learned quite early on that it's about you know compromising is not necessarily being compromised you know there Ooh, is a difference I like that and uh you, you know if you're directing films you've got to <laughs> you've got to spend as much money as they'll let you and um uh, and and they you know there's going to come a time when they won't let you spend any more and then that's about cho you know choosing your your you know what you compromise on and things you know and that's not being compromised you know that's just part of the job you know right i love that so in the end what message or life lesson do you hope people plant deep in their hearts um after watching this movie like what what do you hope that they walk away with um well that people can change i mean mary changes from being a sort of spoiled little girl to someone who can make friends and um bring uh and, and change other people um i think that friendship can heal you know yes. that nature can heal i mean i think you know the nature in the film the, the garden in the film and the way that the children interact are all one sort of continuum. So it's about friendship and nature healing together. Um, and, um, and also that I think, you know, that, that there's a, there's a quid pro quo in, 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 in the way that, that, you know, the children work with the land, you know, are uh, the way the children are in the garden, you know, that actually, I mean, it's only really Dickon that sort of t tends the garden, but the way that they 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 play in the garden is something yeah. that gives the garden it, in the film it, it it animates the garden quite literally. Yes, it's like this uh, symbiotic relationship of you really. It's it's hard to tell where the 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 child stops and the and the garden begins. Uh, they 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 animate each other. Uh, it's. Yeah. It's another one of those little hidden pictures that, that will make, I know it will make people want to go back and watch this film over and over and over because each time I've watched it, I've, I've noticed something else. And I'm like, how did I, how did I miss that piece? Um, it, it's so lovely. Mark, thank you so yeah. much for agreeing to talk with me today and for sharing your secret garden story. Um, one of the things I always like to do is anyone who has anything to do with sharing the secret garden with the world, um, from the musical to the plays to, of course, this new beautiful movie, um, is I always like to basically tell you that you are now an official secret gardener. Um, we want to name you that because here's the deal. Um, when you share this story, um, it, it, it plants a seed of hope into someone else, um, hope that they can change, hope that they can heal. And um, you stepping outside of your box to do something different uh, from your normal thing um, is, is, you know, helping to plant those seeds um, throughout the world. And um, I hope you know how, um, how big of an impact that is going to make. You're, you're, you're going to help heal people by being your, your secret gardening self. And um, I just <laughs> well, want to thank you for that. That's lovely to think of. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the movie. I hope, uh, I hope other people enjoy it as well. Oh, I, I know they will. So uh, uh, everybody go see uh, everything. Go look up Mark. Find out all the awesome things that he is doing. Um, and uh, thank you for listening and watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, anywhere podcasts are um, being listened to. Um, and until next time, y'all, blessings and blooms. Oh my goodness, friends. I had so much fun talking with Mark today about the new film. I'm even more excited than I was before. 
I want to encourage you all to go see the Secret Garden film, of course. And if you're a fan of darker films, check out his others, Utopia, National Treasure, or The Mark of Cain. And remember, all month long here on the podcast, we're featuring interviews with those who've helped bring the new Secret Garden movie to life. That's right. So stay tuned here for next week's episode with the movie's producer, Rosie Allison, who she herself lived on the edge of the moors, just like Mary. Make sure you're following The Well-Tended Life on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe today to our podcast and YouTube channels by the same name so you don't miss a thing. And until next time, y'all, blessings and blooms.